Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can use both Goal Seek and also Solver in Microsoft Excel. These are two different tools that you can use with data analysis. So what can you actually do with them? Well, with Goal Seek, you can solve for an individual variable. What does that mean? Well, let's say at the Kevin Cookie Company, let's say I wanna figure out how many cookies do I have to bake on a daily basis to break even. I can use Goal Seek to solve for that. So what is Solver? It does everything that Goal Seek does, but it does even more. It solves for multiple variables and you can even add constraints. So what does that mean? Well, let's say at the Kevin Cookie Company, we make lots of different types of cookies. We have chocolate chip, we have fortune, we have white chocolate macadamia. What combination of cookies should I bake to maximize my profit, given that my oven will only bake so many cookies per day? I can use Solver to solve for that. If any of this sounds confusing, we're gonna walk through this step by step and I'll show you exactly how you can take advantage of these different tools. In fact, if you wanna learn, I think the best way is to actually do it. I've also included the sample sheet so you can follow along with this video. All right, well, let's jump on the PC and let's start solving. Here I am now in Microsoft Excel. And once again, if you wanna follow along, I've included a link to this spreadsheet in the description of this video. You can simply click on that, that'll open this up and you can follow along with every single thing that I'm doing. I think that'll really help you remember this content even better. Today, we're going to start with Goal Seek. This is the easier of the two, and this allows us to solve for one variable at a time. Now, this might bring back some memories of algebra class back in middle school or in high school, and hopefully those memories are all very positive. To get started on the bottom, let's click into the worksheet called Goal Seek, and this will drop you on this page right here. And we're gonna focus most of our time over on the left-hand side. I know these cookies are very distracting. I probably shouldn't have put them in, but just try your hardest to look over to the left. This is subliminal messaging for the Kevin Cookie Company. Hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you'll wanna buy some cookies. Now I have a few different business questions that I need to answer today, and I have a hunch that Goal Seek can help me with this. Right up here, I wanna know how many cookies do I need to sell to break even on a daily basis? And along with that, once I break even and once I hit that milestone, well, how many cookies do I need to sell to become a cookie millionaire? And I might be getting a little greedy now, but how many cookies do I need to sell to become a cookie multimillionaire? We're gonna use Goal Seek to answer all of these questions. Right down below, I have a table, and I wanna quickly just orient you to it just so you understand what's happening here. Right up on top, I have the number of cookies sold. So how many cookies do I need to sell to be able to meet each one of these up here? So this is called my input. I'm gonna input in different values. For each cookie sold, I make $5 of revenue, or basically this is my price for this cookie. And now I can't make cookies for free. Of course, there are ingredients, there are different costs involved. And so my unit cost is $2.50 to make each cookie. And also it's not just the ingredients, but there are also a lot of overhead costs. For example, I have a commercial kitchen, I have an oven. These are all expensive. And so my fixed costs are $10,000. So to calculate my profit, let's click down here into the bottom cell. And here you can see that to calculate the profit, here I take the number of cookies sold times the unit price, and that's my revenue. And then I subtract all my costs. So here I'll subtract my unit cost times my cookies sold, and then I'll subtract the fixed costs, and that'll give me my total profit. Now right now, I don't have anything entered into cookies sold. So I basically sold zero cookies. And you see what happens when I'm not selling, I'm not earning. So right down here with zero cookies sold, I basically lose $10,000 because I have all of these fixed costs. Now let's say I sell one cookie. So I just sell one cookie, yay, I got a sale. So when I sell one cookie, I make $2.50, right? My revenue is five, I subtract 250, I've made 250, but then I have this massive overhead cost. And so I'm still losing a lot of money. Now remember, my first question is, how many do I need to sell to break even? Now you might think, well, I could just enter in different numbers until I find the break even point. Uh, here, for example, what if I sell 3,000 cookies? Oh, nope, I'm still losing money. Or what if I sell 5,000 cookies? Oh, there I've made some money. 
but what is the breakeven point? Now I could just go around, type in different numbers until I find it, but that takes a really long time. Instead, we should rely on Microsoft Excel to figure this out for us. This is where we can use goal seek to figure out what is the number that brings us to the breakeven point. To access goal seek, let's go up to the top tabs on top and click on data. This opens up the data ribbon and way over here on the right hand side, there's an option called what if analysis. Goal seek is part of what if analysis. When we click on this within this menu, the second option is goal seek. Let's click on this. This opens up goal seek and we have a few different options in here. The first one says set cell. Now I want to set cell right down here. I want to set the profit to zero because if I'm breaking even, basically I'm not making anything, but I'm also not losing anything. So I want to set this cell and I want to set it to zero. That's my break even point. And then here's another option that says by changing cell. Well, the cell that we're going to change is how many cookies are sold. So I'll click here and then let me go over and select cookies sold. So right now I have all of these defined. Let's now click on OK. And here goal seek now has gone through and it's calculated the optimum value. So here, if I sell 4,000 cookies, my total profit will be zero. Now that's a lot of work. I have to make 4,000 cookies and I don't even make profit. Wow. I don't know if this is the best business. Once I'm all done, I can click on okay. All right, well, that's kind of depressing that it's gonna take that much work and I don't even make money, but I'm in this business for the long haul. So let's figure out what it's gonna to take to become a cookie millionaire. Once again, just like we did before, let's go back up to data and then click into what if analysis and then select goal seek. Once again, this opens up goal seek. And just like we did before, let's go through and set this up. First off, I want to set cell total profit. So let's click here and I'll select this cell. Next, I need to say what value I want to set it to. Now, once again, I want to become a cookie millionaire. So I'll type in one and then this is always tricky, but you got to type in six zeros. We're working with big numbers now. So here I have a million and I want to change the number of cookies sold. So once again, I'll click up here. So I have all of these defined. Let's click on OK. It'll go through now and calculate how many cookies I need to sell to make a million dollars of profit. And here it looks like I need to make 404,000 cookies. That is a lot of cookies. But if that's what it's going to take, I'm up for the task. And lastly, we can also calculate what it'll take to become a cookie multimillionaire. Once again, let's go up to what if analysis, click into goal seek. And just like we did before here, I'll set this cell down here and a multimillionaire is at least 2 million. So as long as you've got two, you qualify. And right down here, once again, we want to change the cookie sold. So I'll select that and then let's click on OK. And here it turns out I have to sell 804,000 cookies to make $2 million. That's a lot of work, but that's how goal seek works. So you can solve for a value and it works fairly well and it works with one variable at a time. But what if you have multiple variables or what if you have constraints? This is where solver comes in. Let's jump over to the next sheet called solver and we'll start with the simple example first. I'm now on the next sheet and we're going to run through the exact same example again, but this time instead of using goal seek, I'll show you how you can use solver to get the same answer. Now, right up here on data, click on that tab and within the data ribbon all the way over on the right hand side, you should see an option called solver. And don't worry if you don't see it by default, it's because it's probably not yet turned on. Solver is an add-in for Microsoft Excel and by default it's turned off. So we have to turn it on first. How do you turn it on? Well, let's go over to the left hand corner up in the top, click on the file menu and then go all the way down to options. Within Excel options, let's click on the one called add-ins and this will show us all of the different active or inactive add-ins. And right over here, we'll see the solver add-in. Here it says it's Excel add-in. That's the type of this add-in. So right down here, there's a drop-down list that shows you different add-in types. And we see Excel add-ins here. Let's select this option and then click on go. This opens up another prompt where we can see all of the different Excel add-ins. And you should see the option for solver. Make sure to check that box and then click on OK. Once you check that box on the data tab on this ribbon, all the way over on the right hand side, you should now see a new category for analyze that includes solver. If you went through all those steps and you now have it, congratulations. You just solved how to add solver. 
Let's now click into Solver. This opens up Solver, and here we can enter in all of the different Solver parameters. And at first glance, compared to GoalSeek, this probably looks a lot more complicated. And it is a little bit more complicated. You have a lot more options. However, we can duplicate what we did in GoalSeek exactly. Right up here, we have the option to set the objective. And first, I wanna see what is the break-even point. So my objective is right here in this cell, the total profit. I wanna know what will it take to get to zero. So here, I'll click here, and I'll set this as my objective. Next, I have a few different options, and we'll go into more details on these, but we have three different options. You can set the max, the min, or a value of. So let's say I'm running through and I wanna solve what will it take to, let's say, maximize my profit. I would select max. Or what if I wanna minimize my costs? I could select min. Or over here, just like in goal seek, I can set it to a specific value. And here, I wanna set my total profit to zero because I wanna know the break-even point. So I'll set this to zero. Now, right over here, I can change variable cells. And that's basically what value do I wanna experiment with to get to that break-even point? Well, just like before, I wanna see how many cookies I need to sell to get to this break-even point. So I'll click here and let's select cookies sold. And I now have everything defined that I need. Now, there's a lot more richness here compared to goal seek. For example, we have the max, the min. Here you could choose variables and you're not just limited to one variable. You can set multiple variables in here. And down here, we can even set constraints. And in a moment, we'll come to this, but I wanna keep it simple for now and let's see if we could duplicate the results. So everything else here for now is fine and don't worry, we'll come back and we'll go through it. But for now, let's click on solve. And look at that, Solver has found a result. And here, if I move it over here, just like before, I can see that I need to sell 4,000 cookies to get to the break-even point. Once again, that's a lot of work and it's really starting to settle in now how many cookies I'm gonna have to make. I'm not excited about that. But here it looks like Solver has completed successfully. I'll click on OK and this looks great. I was able to use Solver to do exactly what I did with GoalSeek. Now, of course, why use something more complex when you have goal seek? Let's see a true example where Solver really comes in handy. And for that, let's go down to the bottom worksheet called Solver Advanced and click into this. And wow, this looks a lot more advanced than the previous example. Now, this might start to look a little bit scary, but when you see how Solver works, it's actually pretty beautiful how it could let you find or help you get to the optimal answer. So right here, I have another business question that I wanna answer. I wanna know what types of cookies should I bake to maximize my profit? Like I said in the intro, at the Kevin Cookie Company, we have lots of different cookie types, all listed right here. For each cookie type, I need to decide how many cookies to bake. Once again, my kitchen can only bake so many cookies. My oven capacity can only make up to 15,000 cookies per day. And so I need to carefully decide which cookies are most profitable for me. But along with that, I also have some constraints. I have the oven capacity constraint. I also have demand constraints too. I can't just make all chocolate chip cookies because people only want so many of them. Also over here, I can see how much profit I make per cookie. So some cookies are more profitable than others. In fact, chocolate chip cookies are a lot more profitable than fortune cookies. They just don't have the same margins. And over here, I can see the total profit per cookie type and also the total profit overall. So let's just take a very quick example. Let's say I decide to bake one chocolate chip cookie. I'll enter in one over here. So here I've made $1.50 and my total profit is $1.50. If you look across all of these different cookie types, you might notice that chocolate chip has the highest profit margin. Here it's $1.50. So why not just make all chocolate chip cookies and forget the rest of the cookies, who needs those? But one thing to remember is people only want so many chocolate chip cookies. So let's say my oven capacity is 15,000. What if I said, hey, let's make 15,000 chocolate chip cookies? Well, people aren't gonna eat them all because people don't want 15,000 chocolate chip cookies. I'd be left over with 5,000 cookies and that'd be bad for business. I don't wanna have any leftovers. So instead, I wanna use Solver to help me figure out the optimum combination of cookies to make. Now, one thing to call out, I do wanna show you how you can do this without Solver, just so you understand how it works. And then when we run through Solver, it'll make a lot more sense. So here in this example, well, chocolate chip is my most profitable and demand is only 10,000. So here I'd wanna make, let's say 10,000 cookies. This way I get 15,000 profit. 
if I go down this list, I see that my next most profitable cookie here is the oatmeal raisin. So here, let me max out the demand there as well. And now I have 14,000 baked and I have 1,000 left. And here I see that my next most profitable cookie is a white chocolate macadamia. So then I'd make 1,000 of these. So this will get me to the maximum total profit. But let's say I had a lot more cookies or maybe the example had more constraints it would become very difficult to do this manually. So let's go to Solver and see how it can help us. Once again, to access Solver, let's go up to the top tabs, click into data, and all the way over on the right-hand side of the ribbon, let's click on Solver. This opens up Solver, and now we're gonna use more of the capabilities compared to the previous example. Here, we can set the objective, and I wanna make as much profit as possible. I'm a true capitalist here. So let's move this over to the left-hand side, and for the objective, it's gonna be this total profit cell. Here, I'll click on this, and then let me select this cell. Next, I need to decide, well, what do I wanna do with this? Do I wanna set a max, a min, or a value of? Now, once again, I wanna maximize my profit. So over here, I can click on max, and this will find all the different variables that lead to the maximum profit. Now over here, I can define what cells do I wanna change. So before we always changed one cell, but once again, one of the values of Solver is that I can change multiple variables. So here I'll click over here. I wanna figure out the combination of cookies that I should bake. So here I'll select all of these different cells and then let's click on okay. Next, I wanna add some constraints. Right here for the quantity that I bake, I don't wanna bake any fractional cookies. I need them all to be integers. So that's gonna be my first constraint. Let's go over here and click on add. This opens up a prompt where I can add my first constraint. And once again, I don't want any fractional cookies. So I'm gonna select all of these values here. This is gonna be how many cookies I'm baking. And right here in the drop-down list, I can select integer. So my constraint is all of these have to be an integer. Once again, they're not gonna be fractional cookies. Once I'm done, I'll click on add. Next, I wanna make sure that the cookies that I bake don't exceed my oven capacity. Right down here, I have a cell called total baked. And this is simply a sum of all of the cookies that I make. And I need to make sure that this does not exceed 15,000. In fact, I want it to be exactly 15,000. I wanna use the maximum capacity of the oven. I don't wanna go below, and of course I can't go above. So right here, I'll click on the total baked cell. Then I'm gonna select the equal sign, and my constraint right here is going to be 15,000. Next, let's click on add. And lastly, I wanna add one more constraint. I wanna make sure that however many cookies I decide to bake for each one of these cookie types doesn't exceed the overall demand for that cookie type. So here I'm gonna select all of these different cookie quantities that I'm going to bake, and I need it to be less than or equal to the total demand. So here I'll select the total demand, and that looks good, so I'll click on OK. This opens up the solver window again, and here I can see all of the different values that I input. I could also see all of my different constraints down below. So all of these constraints look good. I've defined them all now, and down below I have a few more options, and I do wanna take a moment just to look at these. Right here, there's a checkbox that says, make unconstrained variables non-negative. What the heck does that mean? Basically, as it's going through and setting these different variables, I wanna make sure they stay positive. I don't wanna bake any negative quantities of cookies, unless of course, maybe I'm starting up a weight loss program, that might make sense. But for now, I only wanna make whole cookies. So let's leave that box checked. And down below, we have a few different methods for solving this. And when I click on this dropdown, we have GRG, nonlinear, simplex, LP, and evolutionary. What are these and which one should you choose? Let me show a quick example of what these mean. The first one is called GRG nonlinear. What does that even stand for? It's generalized reduced gradient. And that probably doesn't tell you too much more about what it does. Basically, if your data is in a nonlinear form, so here I have an example, it'll find the maximum point or maybe it'll find the minimum point or it'll find a specific value. Now, of course, there is a downside with that approach. 
Let's say it's going through and it finds the maximum point. This is referred to as the local maximum. As soon as it finds something that seems like a high point and it starts going down again, it'll select this as the best option. However, as you go a little farther along, it might find another value that's even higher. And this is where you can use the evolutionary model. It'll find the what they call the global maximum or the global min. However, the one downside with this approach is it also takes a lot more compute power and it takes a lot longer. And I'm not kidding when I say it takes a long time. I have a powerful computer and even with this simple example, it took a long time. Lastly, there's also the simplex linear model right here. And if your data forms a linear model, this is the best and quickest one to select to find the optimum value. So now that we went back to school for a moment, which one should you actually choose? Well, there's a reason that Microsoft Excel makes GRG nonlinear the default. This one will not only solve nonlinear models, but it'll also solve linear models. So even if you have this selected, it'll still solve for linear. So it'll do what the simplex LP does. However, it might take a little bit longer. Then you also have the evolutionary, and especially with that two hump example, the GRG might miss that, but in most cases it goes so much quicker, it's worthwhile going with this one. And if you're truly worried about that double hump issue that I showed, you can click into options. And yes, you have a lot more options. If you thought the previous screen was intimidating, this one is even more so. Here you have tons of different options. But here if we click into GRG nonlinear, you have the option to use multi-start. So this way it'll search at multiple points. And so if there are, let's say two humps or three humps, chances are it'll find that optimum point that you're looking for. So here I'll just set it to use multi-start. Also here for the evolutionary model, you can also configure this as well to maybe try to speed it up a little bit. So you have lots and lots of different options that you can play with, but chances are if you're simply running solver, you should be able to get by by just selecting GRG nonlinear. And if once again, you're worried about the double hump, simply select that multiple start option. Once we're all set to go, let's click on solve and let's see what this gives us. And check that out, it looks like it came up with a solver solution. Here within the prompt, I can choose to keep the solver solution. Here you see that it automatically enters the solution into my table. Or I could have it restore the original values. But once again, the original values were all just zeros. That's not going to help me much. All of this now looks good. I could save the scenario if I want to come back to it. But for now, I'm good. I have all the values here, so I'll click on OK. So here now you see that solver automatically calculated the quantity to bake. So here I should max out my chocolate chip cookies, followed by oatmeal raisin, and then followed by white chocolate macadamia. So I'm sorry for all of the sugar, snickerdoodle, and fortune cookie fans, but unfortunately they just don't make as much money. And with limited oven capacity, I need to focus on these to give me the highest amount of profit. All right, well, that's how you can use both Goal Seek and Solver in Microsoft Excel. If you were able to solve some of these cookie problems, please give this video a thumbs up. To see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you want to see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.